August 8th, Venerable Mary of Agreda, Virgin Second Order. Mary was born at Agreda in Spain in 1602 of noble parents whose virtues surpassed the nobility of their birth. Very early, the child showed special signs of grace. At the age of six, she had attained a high degree of prayer, which was noticeable in her devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary and to the sufferings of our Lord. Her confessor recognized the great graces which, with which she was favored and permitted her at a tender age to receive Holy Communion and to practice extraordinary works of penance. Painful illness which afflicted her, she bore with the greatest patience, strengthened by the remembrance of Christ's sufferings. In her 17th year, Mary entered the convent of Poor Clares of the Immaculate Conception at Agreda. As a novice, she excelled in the exercises of convent life. She made her profession on the Feast of the Purification in 1620 as Sister Mary of Jesus. After she had consecrated herself to God through the holy vows, the young religious strove for perfection with holy earnestness and cheerful surrender to God. At the same time, her unassuming humility and kindness of heart made her so beloved by her fellow sisters that at the age of 25, she was elected abbess. The Pope confirmed her election to office and she was obliged to accept it repeatedly for 38 years until her death. Only once, at her most earnest request, was she released for a period of three years. As the superior, Mary was always the first among her associates to engage in lowly work. She swept the halls, nursed the sick, washed their linens, and appeared to have a special preference for the most menial services. Her way of life was so austere that one wonders how she could do her work. She not only abstained from meat, but never partook of eggs, milk, or cheese. She slept on a board for only two or three hours. The remaining time of the night she spent in exercises of devotion. Every night, laden with a heavy cross, she made the way of the cross. Even as the superior, she strove to practice obedience, following the suggestions of her higher superiors, and in spiritual matters, submitting wholly to the guidance of her confessor. For a time, she had a confessor who dealt harshly with her and never granted her any request she made. But Mary obeyed him cheerfully and often said later, quote, he acted well. I always thought that he was right and because of obedience, I felt great peace of soul." End quote. She governed her subjects with as much wisdom as love. She was endowed with great wisdom so that persons of the highest rank, also prelates and bishops, even the king of Spain, asked her for advice. When she spoke of God, all who heard her were inflamed with the love of God. She received special revelations concerning the life of the Virgin Mother of God, which she recorded in a book called The Mystical City of God. Mention should be made of Mary Agreda's work among the Indians of Texas and New Mexico. Her ardent desire, prayers, and sacrifices for their conversion were apparently rewarded with the gift of bilocation. Between 1621 and 1623, when Mary of Agreda was between 19 and 21 years of age, she made visits during ecstasies to the Texas Indians, coming, as it seemed to them, from the hills on their horizon, and returning that way after her instructions were over. When these Indians presented themselves to the Franciscan missionaries in New Mexico and asked that fathers be sent among them, it was learned that a lady in blue had often come among them, instructed them, and ordered them to seek out missionaries to baptize them. Upon investigation, it was learned that this lady in blue was Mary of Agreda, who, when she was put under obedience to tell what had happened, said she had no explanation. She could not say how she got there, 
only that when she was praying for the welfare of the Indians, she just found herself among them and began to instruct them. Presently, she found herself home again. This happened many times. Mary died on Pentecost morning, May 24, 1667, at 9 o'clock. At the time, the Holy Ghost had descended upon the apostles, and when the Veni Creator Spiritus, come Holy Ghost Creator, was being recited in the canonical hours. She passed away, saying the words, Veni, Veni, Veni. At her grave, many miracles were wrought, and her cause of beatification is now being carried out in Rome. Special mention of St. Dominic should also be made today, because the Franciscan calendar directs that St. Dominic be commemorated on August 8th in a feast, not merely a memorial as in the Roman calendar. The reason is the fact that the founder of the Order of Preachers, who died in 1221 and was canonized in 1234, was a friend and admirer of St. Francis. When the two saints met, Francis gave Dominic the cord he was wearing as remembrance and token of friendship. St. Dominic is, therefore, regarded as the first cord-bearer of St. Francis. Concerning the Operations of the Holy Ghost From earliest youth and until the hour of death, Venerable Mary was guided by the Holy Ghost, so that one can truly say, the Holy Ghost was in her. Luke 2.25 her life demonstrates his marvelous operations. Enlightened by the Holy Ghost, she recognized her own nothingness. Hence, her perfect humility, with which she regarded the most degrading tasks as the most fitting for her. Hence, her submissive obedience, which caused her to give up her own opinion and considered her confessor right, even when he decided matters entirely against her wishes. Consider how the fire of the Holy Spirit also warmed the heart of Venerable Mary. Hence came her devotion at prayer, her love of God, and of her fellow sisters. Hence the warmth of divine love through which others were enkindled by her. The charity of God is poured forth in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Romans 5.5 5. Consider the great strength the Holy Ghost imparted to Venerable Mary. Even as a child, she bore with great patience the most painful illnesses. For many years, she administered the office of a religious superior in an exemplary manner, and she could advise others, even people in high station, by virtue of the strength with which she was endowed. The sacrament of confirmation, in which we receive the Holy Spirit, strengthens our soul for the duties of a Christian life and protects us in the dangers and distress of our earthly sojourn. Pray fervently that he may fill you with new strength. Prayer of the Church O God, who hast taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, Grant us, by this same Spirit, to relish what is right, and evermore to rejoice in his consolations, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 